Okay. <clears throat> Tabula Rasa, Part 1. Um, this is following up on the Lex Luthor plot line where he's sick. I like that there's, the, um, there's a follow-through, although I never really doubted that there would be. Um, one thing that the series... Uh, from Batman, the animated series, to Superman, and now on to Justice League, is there is this um, overall consistency of story. So I never doubted they would follow it up, but I'm I'm glad that they you know actually see it. Uh, so Lex Luthor's out fighting the Justice League because Lex Luthor is a dick. Um, and he manages to get away, which is kind of, well, it's actually kind of inventive. I mean, he uh, attacks this uh, cruise liner ship to divert uh, Superman and Hot Girl's attention. I don't think it would twa take quite as long as uh, it did for them to save everybody. But, I, I, hey, it's not like he just ducked in a corner and it's all good. He had to actively distract Superman. He had to he had to uh, come up with a, they came up with a reason that you know oh Superman can do this 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 why wouldn't he just catch Luther? Oh well there's this you know crisis at hand and he has to deal with that. So hey kudos to them that makes sense. So uh he goes to the Luther Tower building, which seems kind of stupid, but Lex's ego, you know, he can kind of go, he's going to go back to his place of power. And apparently the company is now being ran by Mercy, which um, I believe she was created for the animated series, uh, Superman animated series. I'm 99% sure maybe she appeared in something and that's where they built it. But I'm pretty sure she's the Harley Quinn of... Uh, of um, the Superman animated series, and now she's running the uh, the show. She's running Luther uh, LexCorp. She seems to have a different look, longer hair, because she always had the short thing, because she was like the valet and stuff, and like his bodyguard. So they've changed her around a little bit physically, but I mean, they keep repeating the name Mercy and bring up her backstory, so. Even though she doesn't quite look the same, you can figure out who the character is if you if you know your stuff. Um, so he's trying to find you know this one one employee who Mercy fired and p pisses him all off, and uh, he goes out to find him. Uh, meanwhile, the in, 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 I don't know where they're going with this the. Martian Manhunter has a real weird thing to do in this. He's like opening his mind. I don't know how I feel about this because a broad stream psychic sweep, you know, it almost feels like, um, like in the Dark Knight, uh, where they have all the cell phone tapping. Here, here you're not even tapping into people's cell phones. You're broad screen, screen, uh, invading people's minds. That's, and, and, and it's not even really addressed, except that Marsh Manor can't shut it off. But the moral implications of that are astounding. Um, really made me feel uncomfortable, because we could go, oh, it's a cartoon, oh, it's expediency, oh, it's this, but, um, yeah, that's really a very, very morally not even, not even great. That's pretty much wrong. I mean, that's uh, that's taking illegal wiretapping to like the next level. And the only way you could possibly justify it is like they have a quick sudden like there's no other way. And the uh, characters in the Justice League are so such moral characters. 
that they believe they can get away, uh, you know, in, in writing this, but it just, it doesn't jive with me. It makes me uncomfortable, really uncomfortable, especially uh, having not too long ago uh, had it come out again that the government is tapping everybody pretty much, and, and well, not tapping everybody, tapping whoever the hell they want in any which way that they want. Big surprise. And this is like the next legal level. I mean, that's just your communication devices. This is your head. Um, wow. Um, but John's having the, can't shut it off, and he desperately wants to. Point where he's freaking out. Um, and I'd be interested in, to see where that goes. Because, I mean, that's... That's dark all around. It's more, very morally questionable what he did. And then it gets, you know, and now he's having to pay this terrible price. Which I suppose, I guess, is the is the payoff for even opening that door. Um, so they have, uh, the, the title of this piece is uh, Tabula Rasa. Blank slate, uh, essentially. Uh, and... That refers to uh, the character uh, of Amazo. Amazo. I never know how to say it. Yeah, I don't really know much about this character either. There's been multiple iterations. I, I think, I've only encountered him twice in my comics reading. One during Judd Winnick's Batman run, uh, right around the time of Red Hood. He's also in Under the Red Hood. Uh, and then one time in one of the Justice League runs, I want to say maybe Dwayne McDuffie's? I'm not 100% sure. So I know very little about this character. And they're not really doing that version. They're taking the idea of this robot that can copy the powers uh, of those he comes in contact with, or, or in this case, sees which you wonder how just seeing a power would let you adapt, but what the hell do I know? Uh, it seems to be kind of, you know, playing on this whole nanomachine kind of idea. Uh, so not only is it the blank slate of uh, him, it's the Ama uh, Amazo, 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 I believe Amazo, uh, in terms of, the, the mental state of this uh, being is very childlike. Is uh, Luther comes across him when he finds the uh, the uh, scientist's place to find out he's dead, and he finds this this creation, uh, Amazo, and it's like, uh, well, who's gonna take you know, who's gonna take care of me? And Luther's like, I will. Now let me tell you a story about these bad bad people. You know, the Justice League. If you don't stop them, I'll go away, and then. What will you do? So you should stop the bad people. Uh, you know, very, very, you know, very easy to see through, but through a child's eyes, you can, uh, the naivete of a child, the, the, the blank slate that is a child's mind where you can just fill it with whatever you want, you know, for good or ill. Um, so that works. But also in terms of his power set, he doesn't really have any powers, but he sees and then absorbs uh, their power. So you see him sprout wings and gain uh, Wonder Woman strength. Pardon me. It's always good to burp in the middle of a vlog, you know. Very, very sophisticated work I do here. Um, so Batman and Superman follow up on Lex. They go to LexCorp. They talk to Mercy. Mercy, for some reason, decides, I don't know, just old school loyalty, not wanting to help them, um, tells them she hasn't seen Lex, which we all know is crap. Uh, so they're out there waiting in the Batmobile, and it's such a weird scene, but it's so, it's so fun. I don't know why I enjoy this so much. Uh, it's Batman and Superman sitting in the Batmobile, and Superman has, is sitting there talking to Batman with a cup of coffee. Now, this isn't like a to-go cup of coffee. 
this is like, uh, if I remember it right, it's like a regular cup of coffee. So where did Superman get that cup of coffee? Because they don't, they don't just give you a mug. They give you the, the little to-go uh, container. But this is a mug of coffee. Is there a bat coffee maker in this in the Batmobile? Uh, <laughs> does he have like a Java dispenser in in the in the Batmobile? The the bat uh, the coffee grinder or something? Uh, the bat espresso machine? And they're sitting there having this conversation, and it's just it's quaint. It's it's uh It's it's very buddy buddy. It's not something you, you would never see that Batman and Superman just in the Batmobile enjoying a cup of coffee. That's not really something you you would see or even expect. And it's just this nice little quaint touch that shows their relationship. And you go, it doesn't even register because it's such a little minute thing. But you 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 know, the more you think about it, you're like, they they could have just had them sitting there. The coffee is this kind of weird little added touch that adds something to uh, what they're doing. So they had this fight, and uh, the, the, the see by this point, Green Lantern showed up. He somehow copied Green Lantern's player powers, even though it's not really science. I don't know how he understands how he copies the ring technology. I mean, that should be even well beyond him, since that's Owen technology. But he does. Whatever. You know. Uh, and they have this kind of conversation then, and they call up Superman and Batman, and, uh, you know, they're all getting their butts whipped, and Green Lantern's like, you know, Superman, you, you have to stay away, because if he copies your powers, we're screwed. And you can see them trying to hesitate, and Superman hesitating as long as he can. But eventually Superman has to be Superman, and he shows up. Now, it's a real plot hole here that uh, he knows immediately to blind Mazo. He, he, he essentially puts this, uh, you know, wraps something around his eyes so he can't see, uh, which doesn't make sense because at no point in the conversation... Pardon me again. Uh, so refined. They ha no, no point do they tell Superman that by line of sight is how he's copying the power. They don't even know that. And I know Superman's a clever guy, but you really mean two seconds he's figured out how he's adapting the powers, not by touch, not by some kind of, you know, ambient, maybe like there's skin cells and he processes the DNA or something, you know. Which wouldn't even work in Green Lantern's case, because how... But, you know, he comes... He already knows that it's sight, so he blinds him, which... I mean, once again, a two-second line. He seems to be copying our our powers as soon as he sees us, or something, you know? To give that little little nugget of a hint um, would have worked. And the Justice League gets their butts whipped, and... Uh, Lex Luthor's plotting evil stuff, and that's all I really got. Uh, we'll see what part two where uh, everybody shakes out. All right, see ya.